Hello and welcome to the Lake Mead Hoover Dam update for March 2024. The water level at the Lake Mead Reservoir is currently 1,076 feet 2 inches. That's an increase of 11 inches from our last update. Although the water level is higher than our last update, it has started to decline from its March 4th peak. The current water level is 125 feet above minimum power pool and 144 feet below full pool. Hello and welcome to Time Bomb. We have a lot to cover in today's episode, beginning with our Lake Mead water level update. Following this, we'll review the water level statistics for Lake Powell and then examine the status of the entire Colorado River system. We'll also explore the current state of the snowpack in the upper Colorado River Basin. After reviewing the stats, we'll look at the post-2026 plans. The seven Colorado River Basin states had until the end of March to agree on a plan to replace the current interim guidelines, but unfortunately, they were not able to come to an agreement. The result? The upper basin states and the lower basin states each proposed their own competing plans. Do either of these plans offer anything new? You're about to find out. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Tell me off in the comments section. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. This is a chart of Lake Mead's water elevation for the 2024 water year. At the beginning of the water year on October 1st, 2023, the water level was at 1,065 feet 10 inches. The water level then declined to a low point on November 17th at 1,064 feet 7 inches. That's when the lake began its steady increase until it pe peaked at 1,076 feet 7 inches on March 4th. Today, the water level is 1,076 feet 2 inches. That represents a gain of 10 feet in elevation or 805,000 acre feet of water so far this water year. The water level at Lake Mead will most likely continue its gradual decline until the runoff from the snowmelt arrives in May. Now let's take a look at Lake Powell. Now I know this is a Lake Mead update video, but the fact is that Lake Mead is managed hand in hand with Lake Powell. I'll talk more about this co-management strategy later in this video. This is a chart of water levels for the 2024 water year for Lake Powell, the reservoir located just upstream from Lake Mead. The peak water elevation was on October 1st, 2023 at 3,573 feet, six inches. Since then, Lake Powell has been on a steady decline. Today, the water level is at 3,560 feet, six inches. That's a decline of 13 feet or 941,000 acre feet of water so far this water year. So while Lake Mead gained 805,000 acre feet so far this water year, Lake Powell has lost 941,000 acre feet. Between the two reservoirs, that's a combined loss of 136,000 acre feet since October 1st. If you just look at the Lake Mead statistics, you'll get the impression that the Colorado River is doing pretty good this year. On the other hand, if you just look at the Lake Powell water level stats, you would think differently, that maybe the Colorado River is not doing that well. The reason for this divergence between the two reservoirs is their location. You see, the Colorado River is divided into two basins, the upper basin and the lower basin. This division was established under the Colorado River Compact of 1922, where the goal was to help manage Colorado River water more equitably given the very different needs of the upper and lower basin states. The Colorado River Compact of 1922 and the many laws and treaties that have been acted since then are collectively known as the Law of the River. It's the law of the river that dictates that specific amounts of water need to be delivered from the upper basin to the lower basin states. Well, that divide between the upper and the lower basin is at a place called Lee's Ferry, located just 15 miles downstream from Lake Powell's Glen Canyon Dam. Lee's Ferry is the point where the water allocations to the lower basin are measured. All of this was decided about one decade before Hoover Dam was even constructed, and more than 40 years before the Glen Canyon Dam was built. The law of the river requires water to be delivered from the upper basin to the lower basin. To accomplish this, water has to be released from the Glen Canyon Dam and Lake Powell. Lake Mead and the Hoover Dam, on the other hand, operate under a different set of obligations. 
Hoover Dam's role is more about distributing water to the lower basin states in Mexico when the water is needed. This is typically during the summer months to meet increased demand for hydropower as well as agricultural needs. Glen Canyon Dam's operation is very different. It's primarily aimed at ensuring the upper basin meets its legal obligations to deliver water to the lower basin. This is why it is so important to look at the status of both Lake Mead and Lake Powell to understand how the Colorado River is doing. Better yet, to get a bigger picture of the situation, we can look at the entire Colorado River system storage statistics. This is a chart of the entire Colorado River system storage for the 2024 water year. At the start of the water year, the capacity was at 25.2 million acre feet. The capacity declined to 24.8 million acre feet before a series of rainstorms added water to a few of the upper basin reservoirs. These storms increased capacity by 167,000 acre feet, bringing the total system capacity to 24.9 million acre feet. Since then, the total system capacity has dropped significantly, and today the capacity is at 24.7 million acre feet. That's a loss of 526,000 acre feet of water in, an, in the entire Colorado River storage system so far this water year. Did you know that contemplating the snow is quite popular in Nevada, Arizona, and Southern California? This is because it's the snowpack in the Rocky Mountains that eventually melts and trickles down to Lake Mead and ultimately becomes a primary water source for these regions. The current snowpack for the entire Upper Colorado River Basin is currently at 111% of median and 95% of the peak snowpack that usually occurs around April 6th. This is a noticeable downgrade from last year at this time, when the snowpack hovered around 130%. But this is not all bad news. At 111%, the snowpack is slightly above average, and there's still a little time left in the winter season for more snow to fall. In order for Lake Mead to continue its recovery from record low water levels, we would like to see another healthy snowpack like last year. The existing operational guidelines for Lake Mead and Powell are due to expire at the end of 2026. Over recent years, officials from the seven states in the Colorado River Basin have been working on formulating a new set of guidelines to replace the current ones. Initially, the plan was to have these new guidelines ready by the end of March 2024. However, significant disagreements between the states in the upper basin and those in the lower basin have led to a deadlock, making it impossible to agree on a unified plan that addresses the needs of all parties. Unfortunately, this impasse resulted in the submission of two distinct proposals, one from the upper basin and one from the lower basin states. Let's take a look at these two proposals. The good news is that both regions agree that the 1.5 million acre foot structural deficit water should be handled by cuts to water deliveries to the lower basin states. Structural deficit water is water that is lost to evaporation and river transport. 1.5 million acre feet is a significant amount of water that was never really dealt with in the law of the river or previous operational guidelines. So the lower basin states have agreed to reduce their share of Colorado River water by that amount. Both plans also agree that when there is less water in the Colorado River, less water should be delivered. The difference in these two plans is how the Colorado River water should be measured and what states will take water cuts when water levels are low. First, let's talk about how each plan wants to measure the Colorado River water. The Upper Basin Plan wants to use the combined capacity of Lake Mead and Lake Powell to determine how much water should be delivered. The Lower Basin Plan would use the total system storage capacity to determine how much Colorado River water should be delivered. The total system storage includes both Lake, and Lake Mead and Lake Powell, but it also includes Flaming Gorge, Blue Mesa, Navajo Reservoir, Lake Mojave, and Lake Havasu. This measurement of the Colorado River will have significant impact on how the river is managed. It's these management numbers that will determine if cuts in water delivery will be needed or not. I have to say, I like the lower basin plan better on this point. 
by using the entire system storage as the measurement, you are actually managing the entire system. This would move us away from the water level forecast system that is currently in place. It also expands the measurement from just two reservoirs to the seven largest reservoirs located all along the length of the Colorado River and its tributaries. The other point of contention is who will take reductions in water delivery once a low water threshold is hit. The lower basin plan says that after the first 1.5 million acre feet of structural deficit that will be shouldered by the lower basin states, the rest of the water cuts should be split evenly between the upper and lower basin states. The upper basin plan says that all water cuts, no matter how big or small, should be shouldered by the lower basin states. Now that's a pretty big difference and it's understandable why they were not able to come to a consensus on these plans. Now that these two plans have been delivered, it's up to the Bureau of Reclamation to consider both plans and to deliver a final plan by the end of this year. Hey, let me know what plan you like best. I'd love to know what you think. And that's all I have for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos and consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.